and then in person here at Extradition Church, 6302 Walter Wright Road in Pleasant Garden, North Carolina, 27313. Um, we are a suburb of Greensboro. Uh, we are 4.3 miles from the Interstate 85 uh, Elm Eugene exit. That is exit 124. And um, city limits of Greensboro just runs right up and butts up against the city limits of Pleasant Garden. So we are, um, we're akin. We're right next to them. So we invite you to come out and be with us. Praise the Lord. And uh, good, good interstates to get over here. And just a couple of minutes after you get off the interstate, get down here. Praise the Lord. So uh, come out and be with us. We'd love to have you. Praise God. Uh, we are continuing on our teaching on um, the blood of the precious blood of Jesus. And just to reiterate, uh, we will we'll go back and cover a couple of points just to um, make sure that we have them well known. And um, but we talked about the precious precious blood of Christ from First Peter chapter one. And uh, we'll just read that our opening and our, our course, our teachings, foundational text for this, um, verse fourteen through nineteen, as obedient children not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust and your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Now remember, Elizabethan English, this word conversation comes from a Greek word meaning manner of life, how you live, the way you conduct yourself. Uh, we don't speak that way today, modernly. We don't say um, in all conversation. When we say conversation, we, talk, we think you're talking, talk about talking, Okay, we had a conversation, um, or we had a text conversation, which is, which is a um, oxymoron. Okay, because you know you don't talk when you text. We're not having a conversation. You're, you're communicating, but we were text. We think of conversation as verbal, but here in this language, it really, meant, it really meant uh, the way you conduct or act, carry how you live, how you live your life. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And, uh, and if you call on the Father, who, hath, who without respect to persons, judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as you know that we were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain con uh, lifestyle or manner of life, received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Webster defines the word uh, precious as highly valuable and costly, highly esteemed, cherished, and beloved. Amen. And so we began our teaching a few weeks ago uh, talking about the importance of the blood, uh, specifically focusing on substitution, the different offerings. Then we moved to... Um, that we are justified or declared righteous by the blood. Hallelujah. That we find forgiveness by his blood. Our conscience, as we talked about um, a couple weeks ago, was purged by the blood. And then we have a new covenant in his blood. And then leading us to our final point, we have victory by his blood. Amen. Looking at Revelation chapter 12, and verse 11, and they overcame him, that is Satan, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. And they overcame him. Hallelujah. We overcome by the power of the blood and our test word of our testimony, our confession, our speaking what God says. But it is enforced, it is empowered, it is substantiated by a blood covenant. Hallelujah. The blood speaks. Hallelujah. It speaks victory. It speaks life. It speaks overcoming. Glory to God. And we overcome. We overcome. Now, that phraseology in and of itself lets us know Dad Hagen used to say this. Some folks think that we're going to go through life on flowery beds of ease. Well, we're not, you know. That the blessings of, life, blessings of God are going to fall on us like ripe cherries off a tree. And the Bible just doesn't teach that. 
Now, we have narratives out there today that try to cherry pick, no pun intended, Scripture to uh, support a position where, you know, we don't do any works. Well, can I ask you, you know, the, Bible, the New Testament doesn't teach us doing any works. We're under grace. Very interesting that Paul said in the second chapter of the book of Ephesians that for in Christ Jesus we are created unto good works. We are his workmanship and are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Sounds like we're called to do some kind of works, aren't we? Amen. Good works. We're not working to achieve salvation. But, you know, there are works that follow our life, that should follow our life. Amen? And there are things that are required in us, amen, that we should be doing. You know, uh, Paul wrote and told, I believe, Timothy, more of it's found in a, uh, um, it's found in a steward, amen, that he be faithful. We're being stewards of the things of God. We're to be faithful. Well, I'm under grace. I don't have to be. No, 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 no. He said, if you're going to be a steward of these things, of the mysteries of God, you're going to have to be faithful. So there are things that we do that are biblical, that are in line with the word, that are not out of line with, a, with the grace of God. I, I think we thank God. We all thank God for the grace of God. Without the grace of God, uh, you know, Jesus wouldn't have come. Okay? And, and, and remember, the, the definition for grace that everybody wants to use, God's unmerited and undeserved favor, just doesn't fit every place that word is used. It just don't fit. There are places where that terminology, that defining, um, doesn't fit the context. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even make sense to do it. There are other things that you have to understand and other, and other ways you have to interpret in order, and, and we can find those in studying the Scripture. Um, the word is a deeper word than a simplistic. You know, it's like sozo, saved. Well, that's more than saved. Okay? You limit the, 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 the extent and the focus of it and the breadth of it by just saying it means to be saved. Well, it, it does. It also means to be healed, to be delivered, to be kept from, all, from temporal evils. Amen. To be made so to be made whole, it means all of that. So grace has a broader spectrum of meaning than than a very narrow uh, uh, God's unmerited undeserved favor. Because then I'm under His unmerited undeserved favor. I'm under grace. I don't. I don't. Deserve, it doesn't matter if I don't deserve it. Or if I've done anything or not, I'm going to get it. That's not how it goes. Okay. So. Uh, they overcame. Now, back to my point that I started before I kind of went on that little rabbit hole journey there. The, the, the fact that he stated it, that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony, money, meaning. We'll work on that. <laughs> Tells me that if you overcame, there was something to overcome. Amen. Paul wrote also and said, fight the good fight of faith. Amen. You know, well, we don't think, then people go back and get in all the scriptures. Well, he that's entered into faith is entered into rest. See, that, that's, 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 let me just say, that's very shallow theology. Because you're just, you're, you're cher again, cherry picking a scripture that fits your narrative and it's so surfacey. That, I mean, I'm almost a four-year-old could tear it apart if they just studied. Okay? We do enter into rest by faith. What, rest from what? Rest from our works or efforts to achieve um, righteousness, to achieve standing with God. But, we, you know, we still have works we are to do. Uh, James and Paul. Everybody says, James and Paul were in disagreement. Now, I got, I've got people, I have seen them post it. And so I'm not just saying here, I've seen them do it. Say, James is 
now believed to not be New Testament canon because he disagreed with Paul about works. No, no. Okay, so now we got part of the Bible that won't fit so sweetly and perfectly into your narrative. It, every, script, and every scholar now believes. What's, who's your every scholar? The three bozos that got together and, you know, didn't know their head from a hole in the ground and uh, came up with this. And they run around and preach this stuff. They'll go tell people. And they'll, oh, no. No, Paul was wrong. Paul's not canon. I mean, John, James is not canon because he, he, did, he didn't agree with Paul. And Paul wrote about grace. Yeah, right. He did. He also wrote about other stuff, too. Because James says, show me thy faith without thy works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Now, it was, it's semantic. Works there means corresponding action, actions that correspond to your faith. Amen. Our actions are, should be a representation of what faith is in us. Amen. Now, again, being an um, older charismatic, word of faith guy, we would always, you know, people were always trying to have an action. Well, Dick, I don't think I broke it. Huh? I'm, I'm wondering if I'll put both feet up here or not. <laughs> You know, <clears throat> um, where was it before the creek? Sorry, guys, I'm sorry. Like, when you're live, you just can't do anything about it. Corresponding actions. Um, the actions of our life should be a representation of what's in us. Now, back to the Word of Faith Charismatic era, we would, uh, people would try to have an action before they got the faith. See, thinking that the action, okay, over a long period of time was going to give them faith. And um, I rarely saw any of those actually get there because they, they, weren't, they weren't having a faith, an action that corresponded to their faith. They were trying to make an action create faith. Okay? Now, Paul looked at Danny, who was impotent from his mother's womb, and said, stand up right on thy feet. And he stood up. Amen. Amen. Um, Peter and John went to the temple and saw a man who was impotent from his mother's womb. Amen. It's a silver and gold have I none, but such as we give thee. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Paul looked at one man, and I think it's this other man. He says, uh, Paul looking at him, perceiving he had faith to be healed. See? He told him what action to take because he had faith to be healed. He says, stand up right there. You know, he immediately rose, received strength in his ankle bones. So there's, there is this, um, we make getting faith so formulized and so difficult sometimes that people can't get it for trying to follow the principles and the formulas. Now, I don't, I, I'm not against you know, Brother Hagin had series on, you know, like th th four steps to the highest kind of faith or whatever. I, I'm, I'm not preaching against that. It is when we hear and we, inter you know, and a lot of times people run off with the title and don't even read the book. Well, that's great. Holy Bible, I got it all now. Now you got to read the book. Okay. Uh, just, just, you know, read the title and go, whoa, that's good. I like that. And then running off, and you know, you can have what you say. We did that all over the place. Here's a little mini book, you can have what you say. But when you read the book, you find out you can have what you say because you're fed on the word and you're saying what the word says. We got people run off with that going, I got somebody else's wife. And I got your car because I, I can have what I say. And you're like, like what Brother Hagin told one Raymond student one time, 
He said, well, I got, to, he said, I got something to do with it. And the Lord's already told me what to do with my Ford Bronco. He told me to keep it. You know, Raymond Stewart probably walked away going out of it. See, that, that's, there were two girls at Raymond. And there were, two, there were two guys, Doug Jones and um, I can't think if the other one was Tony Cook or not, but I know one of them was Doug Jones. I think it was Tony Cook. Um, and these girls had gotten to enough, enough classes and heard enough about you can have what you say. They started confessing them as husbands. Now, they had gone out on a date with them like once or twice, but really weren't interested. So they were out, Brother Hagin, traveling on the crusade team, you know, somewhere one time. And somebody wrote him a letter and said, look, you better, when you get back here, you better deal with this. And said, what's going on? He said, so-and-so has done bought invitations and set a date and sent them out because she's acting on her faith. And when, he would, when they were telling him that we're not interested, they, they would tell their friends, I don't receive that in Jesus' name. Everybody say SOS. Stupid on steroids. Okay, but this is this again is where we get into trouble because we didn't go to the word. We didn't take we just heard a catchphrase or a book title and we interpreted that to mean whatever because so and so said it. But we but what in con, what context was it stated in? What context was it um, the 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 what they were trying to say built in that created this phrase? What's behind it? Because if you don't find that out, it ain't going to work. Okay? All right. So, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. What does this mean to us? Because it's the precious blood of Christ. We've been purchased with the precious blood of Christ. Well, one thing is the blood delivers us. Amen? The blood has procured... Remember, it's a covenant. It is a blood covenant. And inside that covenant are promises and blessings. And so our confession or our word of testimony has to be grounded in the covenant that the blood has procured and ratified. You can't go outside of that. There is no basis for faith outside of that covenant that the blood procured. So, you can't say, I believe if I eat arsenic, I'll be healed of back pain. Yeah, you will. Because you'll be dead. Okay? But it's, you, see, you just can't make up stuff. You just can't make up stuff. So we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Now, establishing that we, that we have the right to overcome because we're in a covenant with God. Okay? The blood is powerful. The blood is on the mercy seat. The blood, the blood is the seal of our covenant. There's power in the blood. I mean, all of that. But let's take it down that next level to the understanding that it's powerful because it's ratified a word from God, God's oath, and blood was shed to seal that oath. And so we overcome by the word of our testimony, but wait a second now, because if we don't put a parameter on that, the word of our testimony or a confession, then you'll just say anything you want to say and say, I can overcome because of my testimony. But wait, what if your testimony is outside the bounds of the word? There, there is no blood covering its guarantee. Does that make sense? There, there is no covenant covering you've got somebody else's wife. There's no blood there. There's no guarantee from heaven of that being a reality. And if you do get her, you might find out you don't want her and she don't want you. 
because it was not orchestrated out of heaven. It was, it was the spirit of Antichrist that worked there, sowing that seed into you, or you allowing in and feeding on it, and then beginning to confess, thinking God's going to get in on it with you. Come on. But getting away from the silliness and the uh, hyperbole and the children being tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine and getting back to a solid base does what I want, what my desire is, does it fit under the covenant of God, which is sealed by the blood of Jesus? Now, when we can go there, now, I mean, that tells you one thing. You just can't go where well, the blood's going to take care of it. It's sealed it. It's guaranteed it. But you got to know what it is. You can't take it from a purely speculative standpoint. You got to go to what, you know, look, you know, listen. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He's like a lawyer. And a lawyer, if you don't know the contract, they will eat you alive. And if you don't have a good lawyer who's telling you in, in, in clear, with clarity what your contract means, they will eat you alive. Okay? And they'll try to drag you out through court and, and, and bankrupt you so you can't fight for it. So, what are we saying? You want healing. I don't know anybody that has sickness, pain, disease, anything, who doesn't want healing. Now, they may not be willing to pay the price to get it. And, I, and you just hold on, don't, don't get all nerdy gracie on me. What price? You're going to have to get into the Word. You're going to have to find the Scriptures that substantiate your belief that God wants you well. And meditate or feed on them until you actually believe, not just hope. Oh, I hope this is true. I wish it were true. I want it to be true. But what happens when you get to the point that you know that it's true? Now, coming into play in that is the blood of Jesus. Because we just, we've read in this in teaching from Hebrew, uh, Hebrews 9 and 10 how that almost all things are, you know, purged, almost all things are purged by blood, okay? But now, see, under the Old Covenant, when they gave the law and they gave that, they took scarlet wool and hyssop with blood and sprinkled it on the law to ratify it in blood. Symbolic of Jesus blood being placed on the law that's placed in our hearts and our minds and not in tables of stone, that it is ratified. So we, we, we come, first of all, to this understanding that God's word, the promises of God, the covenant, this, this better covenant, this new covenant established on better promises has been sealed and ratified by the blood of Jesus. So there was a great price paid for this ratification, okay, and this seal. And it is sealed with spotless blood. So now when you come and you're looking what is in the covenant, because I know this, that the covenant, now remember, throughout the Bible, we have these different covenants that were symbolic of the coming greater covenant. Because, see, the covenant God has is, not, is between God and the man, Christ Jesus. But if any man be in Christ, okay? So this is a, the, the promises are a blood covenant promise. Sealed by the blood of Jesus, risen 
from the dead to be the administrator of his will. So you don't get the, you know, the devil don't get to come. Well, he didn't really mean that. Wait a second. He's at the right hand of the father, making sure that the will is executed exactly the way he wanted it. There's no semantic games and playing games with, well, he really meant this or he, no, I meant this. Father, it was my blood. I shed it. You raised me from the dead. I'm overseeing it, and I meant what I said. Okay? <clears throat> then a devil comes to, hey, well, God, what God meant was, that was only for the Jews. The glory to God. He's not a Jew which is one outwardly, but one inwardly, whose circumcision is not of the flesh, but of the heart. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, this is why the blood's important. This is a blood covenant. A covenant was made, a new, a better, and a, a new and a better covenant was made, and it was not sealed with the blood of bulls or goats. It was sealed with the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. And God is in covenant with Christ who cannot break the covenant. So that means that Jimmy over here can't mess up your healing. He went out and got drunk last night. I can't get healed. Nope. Because the covenant's between God and the man, man, Christ Jesus, and we're in Christ. So, as we come and we look into the Word, whether for prosperity, for healing, for deliverance, for soundness, needs met, your children, I mean, whatever it is, find the Scriptures. Why? Because when you find the scriptures, we've already settled, and you need to meditate on this and settle it within you. From Hebrews, Revelation here, 12, 11, okay? The, the allegorical um, things throughout the Old Testament, that this blood of Christ is a guarantee, okay? It's not just a tradition. It's not just um, a ritual. It was a spiritual, eternal guarantee that what God said he would do, he would do. And what God promised you, he promised. What God uh, blessed you with, he will bless you. Hallelujah. Ephesians, um, this one just came up, it's not in my notes. Okay. All righty. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints, which are at Ephesus. You know, and I hadn't really ever thought about it much. The seven letters to the seven churches were written to the seven churches in Turkey, what is modern day Turkey. I just never really thought about it. You know, I just didn't really kind of think about it. Just like a little Middle Eastern region. I wouldn't really. Literally, it's in Turkey. Be praying. Uh, be praying for this next runoff election in Turkey. The current president is a, um, is a, um, what do you call it? Um, Muslim, what kind of, it's, it's, it's a, um, not devout, it's the other word you use when you're talking about somebody. Um, well, yeah, that's a type of Muslim. I'm talking about, huh? The per, when, when, when you're a, um, oh God, there's a word that's stronger than devout. Um, maybe orthodox is something. It's another word I'm looking for, and I can't, I can't get it. Anyway, he's one of them. Okay, he's devout. He's orthodox. Okay, um, okay. I, I, I was hoping you, uh, maybe if Jesse were here, she would tell me, but she's not. So, okay. Um, but this next election, see, he didn't win fifty percent of the vote, so it's a runoff, and this is critical. Because he is trying to steer Turkey into very, very strong <coughs> Islam and making deals with China and um, Russia. 
and the other guy running is more is, is secular. So he's he's, he's open to, to different religions, you know, because they want the money, they want the they want the economy. Okay, and, and I'll probably be going home tonight and get about halfway to the house. And go, That's the word I'm looking for, and y'all won't get to hear what it is. It's not devout. There's a different word. Huh? No, I'm, I'm not looking for the, um, the type of Islam. I'm looking for, there's a, there's a word you use when you talk about religious people that, um, huh? Fundamentalist. Yes, that's, that's, that's more along the lines of what I'm looking for. He's fundamentalist, you know, very fundamentalist in Islam. Huh? Zealot. Yeah, but fun, that's more the word I'm looking for. Okay? That might even be the word I'm looking for. Um, yes. Thank you. We got that done. It's not as bad as in Germany one time. I was preaching in Germany, and I said, and so you take God's word, this planet, and it germinates. <laughs> and the interpreter goes, you know, in German, you take the seed planet, and it, he says, Deutschland, which is the word for Germany. And John Greenwald's sitting on the back row, and he's got his head like this, and he puts his head down and goes, no, no. <laughs> Takes them 15 minutes to get it across to the interpreter. We are not talking about Father Russia. I mean, uh, Father Germany. It, it's, it's, it's the fatherland. Russia is the motherland. The fatherland. We are talking about the process of seeds germinating. He could not get it. It was kept coming out Deutschland. We're like. <laughs> 15 minutes. My first experience overseas was in, um, uh, I went to Dominican, that was Spanish, but when I went on my own trip by myself, to Estonia. They had, three people, they had three interpreters there, and they would take turns. They'd get tired. I wore them out. I'd be preaching like a crazy man. I'd be just going, 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 and one would sit down and get up and take over. And when they, when, when they missed it, they all say, no, 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 no. And they would sit there and have this conversation in Estonian, back and forth with each other, and then they turn around and go, it's, it's good, we got it. <laughs> good, we got it. <laughs> I had no idea what they said and what they came up with. I was totally outside the loop. <laughs> Pretty funny. All right. Um, which are the emphasis of faith in the Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So God has already blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. But we still have to procure that by faith. We receive those things. Okay? You see, um, we know this, that everybody's name is already written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Because Revelation tells us that those whose names weren't blotted out. So he will blot out those who don't receive Jesus. Okay? So he's blessed us. The blessings are there. How do I, how do I get what he had? Okay? But understand, God loves you so much, he's already sent it. He's already procured it. He knows what you have need of before you ask. Okay? He meets your need exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or even think. All right? How do we get into this vein of receiving this? <clears throat> or as the old, old people used to say, get under the spout where the glory comes out. Okay? Well, it comes and takes place by believing and acting on the Word. Now, but why does the Word have force in your life? Because the blood has ratified it. So the revelation of the blood brings revelation from the Word. Because that Word that you're looking at now takes on a higher significance because you understand that the blood of Jesus ratified it and is the guarantee of this enforcement when you receive it by faith and you make your confession. So they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the Testament or their confession because the blood ratified it. The blood sealed it. 
The blood guaranteed it. Um, has anybody ever gone to, to buy a car and you weren't going to pay, you weren't going to finance it? Not with their people. And they want you to use their people. Why? Because they're going to get kickbacks. And the game is here. I watched them do it once to me. They tried to do it to me one time. And my wife, Janie, Lord have mercy. Don't take her if you want the car. Because what they, they, here's the question they always ask you. How much can you afford a month? Not how much you want to pay. How much can you afford? And the moment you give them a number, you're toast. Because why? Because they got a computer screen up there with interest rates across it. And they're going for the highest interest rate they can get out of you. So if you say, um, I can afford 500 a month, but they'll sell it to you at 300. The difference is not they're taking money up price. They are using interest rates to adjust the payment. And I know this because the guy was, we were haggling with the guy and buying a car and he got out and went to do something. And I got out and looked at the screen and there were all the interest rates across the screen. And the number that we were working on was up here and you know, other, other, other numbers were down here that were lower. And he, he had started out higher and been working his way down the interest rates. It's how they do it. Okay. They're, they're, and why? Because they're, they're going to borrow the money at this lower interest rate to sell you the car, and then they're going to get a kickback out of that difference. Okay? The higher they sell it to you for in that interest rate range, the more money they get as a kickback. Okay? So, how come I got off on all that? It had something to do with what I was talking about. Don't y'all remember? The blood. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Glory. Just told, I had the whole point I was going to make with that, and it just kind of just went. Well, look at your notes. It's not in there. I, 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 what I, you know what I used so far? The two scriptures I read. <laughs> Nothing else is in here along these lines. So, Haggling prices. Getting you from, oh, okay. Mm, anyway, all right. Well, I'll go back and listen to it. I forgot what I was going to say later. Okay. I can't do it now. We can't play it back right now. Um, anyway, so let, let, let's, let's maybe circle back to something else. Or back, back kind of where we were. When you approach God, and you have something you want from him. Because we have already got the understanding that the blood has ratified this, ratified his word. This, this takes out what you think. Well, I think this, or I think that, or now I just believe. Now, forget what you just believe. Because if you can't validate what you believe with the word what you and I don't mean to be ugly but or harsh or make you feel bad and hurt your feelings but what you believe don't mean doodly squat has no value if what you believe can't be validated or verified by the word okay well I know the Bible says that but I tell you what I believe people do that all the time now wait a second I believe that, you know, God will do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. Now, see, no, that's why you're not going to receive. Yeah, I know the Bible says that, but. Well, and when, and let me tell you something. When you get the word but involved, and I know the Bible says, you ain't nothing but a goat, a billy goat, but and everything. Okay? When we know this and we go to the word with this it's part of our understanding now. And we look at the scripture that says, who his own self bear our sin in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin shall live unto righteousness by whose stripes 
we were healed. Oh, wow. I've got a promise. I've got a declaration, a covenant declaration, that by his stripes I was healed. Now, this isn't just a random scripture. This is a new covenant, better covenant, ratified by the blood of Jesus statement covered by that blood and guaranteed. And now I can look at it and go, by the blood of the Lamb, I have the right to appropriate 1 Peter 2.24. And therefore, I declare, make my confession based on that, that I was healed, I am healed, and I receive it in Jesus' name. And the blood is the guarantee that the word is true and sealed. And Satan can come and say, he didn't mean that for you. No, 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 you don't understand. It's a blood-sealed covenant, and I received that. Well, pastor said it's between the man, God and the man Christ Jesus. Yep, and I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I'm under the blood. My covenant that I have with God is under the blood. Now, God cannot lie. I, I hear people all the time, God can do anything he wants to do. He can't lie. He can't lie. He can't promise you one thing and then refuse to give it. For you to meet the conditions of the word of God, and then God say, no, he's a liar. And he can't lie, so he can't do that. As a matter of fact, this is really strong. For God to lie would subordinate him to Satan because he's the father of all liars. Well, he's sovereign. He can't violate his word. He can't refuse to do what he said he would do. Hello? If you come to him, he will in no wise cast you out. Amen? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He can't go, no, I've chosen not to save you. But you said whosoever. Well, nah, I'm God. No, you lied. Amen. Now, that's, now I'm not going to do it just so you don't get it tight. Okay. But I look over here at Chris and go, Chris, come down here. When you get down in front, I'm going to give you $100. And she comes on up here. I mean, I would. I mean, she's been around enough. That I, I, I would think she, in my opinion, she probably believes that I keep my word. I'm not going to lie. Okay, so she comes up and got her hand that way for $100. And I go, you know, I'm pastor. I don't have to do that. I'm not going to do it. Now, next week we come to church. I say, Chris, come on up here. I'm going to give you $200 a night. You know what she's going to do? She probably ain't coming. Why? Because last time you lied to me. Amen. If she even came back. Because her, her, you know, she's going to look at it and go, well, he's a liar. He's a fraud. I have no confidence that he, he's going to tell the truth and do what he said he's going to do. But we got people who teach people that God is sovereign and that therefore he can do whatever he wants to do. And he doesn't have to do what he said he was going to do. And where'd you come up with that one, Sherlock? The devil. Because Satan wants you to believe that God is a liar. That God won't do what he said he would do. But when we come back here and go, not only is it a matter of his oath, it's the matter of his oath sealed with the blood of his own son. The precious 
blood of Christ. And so you can look at this now and, and have great confidence that as you look into these scriptures and meditate on them and you view them in the light of the blood of Jesus guaranteeing it to allow it to build faith in your heart and your circumstances will lie to you and your experiences will lie to you and this world system will lie to you and your body will lie to you. I remember that confession that, that's in Brother Hagin's tape series of the ABCs of faith or healing belongs to us. I think it's healing belongs to us. Where he says, you know, I believe that the word of God says, da 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 says, now body, line up with the word. Body, I call you healed. Body, you act such and such. And body, you do such. Why? Well, because your body will lie to you. Your body will say, you prayed and believed that you received and I still heard. You didn't get anything. It's a lie. Job said, in referring to the being in the well's belly, belly, I will not observe these lying vanities. Well, pal, you in a whale's gut, covered in seaweed and fish guts and everything else. I will not observe these lying vanities. That's strong. I said, that's strong. What's he saying? Circumstances. Don't override what God said. Circumstances, your body, your body has a voice. Sometimes it's called pain. And it talks real loud. But it's a lie. It's a lying vanity. Trying to get you not to believe the word of God. Which is sealed in the blood. Your, your body's voice is not sealed in the blood. God's word is. I said God's word is. So we take the word and we take the word over the other voices. The voice of pain. The voice of lack. I mean, how many of you ever opened up your bank account and you started talking to you? You know, your, your monthly statement or whatever. Now, usually it's on your phone or, you know, your, uh, electronically. But you opened it up. And I'm going to tell you something. Back before we got out of debt as a church, it talked. I mean, it talked in, in, in uh, TH, TXX, TXH, or uh, Lucas stuff, THX, surround sound. I'm telling you, you're broke. He would talk to you and tell you, you're broke. No, I ain't broke. I'm under broke. I can't even jump up and touch broke. But God had a word. And God had something said. And it lined up with his written word. And we took that word. And we acted on that word. And though the, the surround sound of you broke and, and, and it going all echoing out in all the, the, the front side speakers and the back speakers and the subwoofer, you broke, 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 broke. God spoke. And we acted on what God said. And believed what God said. And the more we moved in that direction, the louder the voice of what the words of what God said came, became real. And it got louder, and it got louder, and it got louder. Till broke won't even talking. I, I'm guessing it was, we just didn't hear it. Because we kept seeing debt free, debt free, debt free, debt free. Debt free. And it got louder. Debt free. Debt free. Debt free. Debt free. Seven and a half months earlier than what God said would we be out if we would do what he said do. In 11 and a half months. Still don't know how in the natural it took place. Don't know how the money, where the money came in. <clears throat> Not really sure how it happened. But it happened. It just kept coming in and kept coming in. And guess what? It didn't stop. And it kept coming in and it kept coming in and it kept coming in. I'll never forget the day where we had as much money in the bank as we were in debt. And it didn't stop there. It kept coming 
and it kept coming and it kept coming. And then we were able to put that big, nice, big down payment on this property so that our payments are really, I mean, they're low. They're low with most people's house payments by far. Hallelujah. And we just like, <laughs> hallelujah. And since we've moved out here, we've, you know, we put in the concrete, bought, bought the barn back there. I mean, you know, fixed up. The, that was not cheap over there, putting all that mulch in and, and, and doing all that work out there. It wasn't cheap. We spent several thousand dollars because it wasn't done, wasn't done at all. All that took money to buy the mulch, to buy the fire pit, to refurbish the playground, to buy the picnic tables. And I put in concrete, put in the storage building. And we're still sitting there, like, looking back at going, glory. Because <laughs> we don't have to, we, we're not broke. We got more than enough. Amen. Hallelujah. My toe was, was ulcerated, you know. They want to cut it off. They want to cut it off. And, you know, gangrene, you can hear gangrene real loud. The body, you line up with the word. Toe, you're healed. Toe, you're whole. Infection is gone. You're whole in Jesus' name. Every time I went to the doctor, it was half the size it was before. And just you go back, well, it's half the size it was last time, half the size it was last time, half the size it was last time. I mean, and we're talking about it having to grow out and over. So it had to be, it had to, like, this whole cylinder had to heal and come all the way up to the top. It was this, the size of my little, little finger, down to the bone. I could hear him scraping the bone when they were debrading it. You know, doesn't that sound great? And I'm like, oh, cool. That's okay. It's healed. And it's healed. By a covenant ratified with the blood of Jesus and the word of my testimony. And it's the word of your testimony because you believe God. And you can believe God because he sealed it in blood. It wasn't an empty promise. It wasn't a flippant promise. It was a blood covenant oath. And he didn't use the blood of a bull or a goat. He used the blood of his son to determine and to reveal to you how important his oath to you is. And then he says, now take that up and put it in your mouth and receive those promises. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Did y'all get anything out of that? <laughs> you oh my? <laughs> yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'll be honest with you, I didn't have, I didn't have but three scriptures. <laughs> I didn't even read two of them. Sometimes God, you just know you got to let God speak and, and take control and you not, you not try to govern it because he wants to bring something out. Well, why didn't he tell you ahead of time? I'll be honest with you. You know, the way I minister and so forth, there are times that if I knew exactly what he wanted me to say ahead of time, I'd mess it up. I, I would I would try to interpret it or I would try to do something with it. It, it, it just this is how he uses me. Okay? Well, you're wrong. I got I gotta use that, you know, I told somebody not too long ago, I'm gonna be me. I'm gonna let God use me the way God uses me. You know? And it may not be your narrative or your cup of tea or the way you think it should be done, but it's how he uses me. It's how he works through me. It's how I know how to work with him. And so I'm gonna work that way. So you can have your seminars all you want to, but this is how he uses me. Okay? All right. So there we are. Let's receive an offering. Go home. Glory to God. It's only 8 o'clock. My goodness. If you need an offering, I'll let those seat back. So if you're doing it electronically, go ahead and send that. Um, if you're not doing anything, just go ahead and praise the Lord anyhow. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, Jess and Caps. 
trip is going to, they're leaving the 10th of July. And they'll be gone six weeks. We get to watch a dog for six weeks. And then Shannon and uh, Dennis are going to Paris on the 16th. So we get to watch a dog for 10 days. What are you doing this summer? Dog sitting. Don't know if Nathan's going anywhere, but if he does, I got blue. But another two weeks. I don't know. You know, just bring them all over and let them have a good time out in the backyard. Hallelujah. And you put three hounds together, a coon hound who bows real loud, a little, a beagle that just, I mean, can't, sh Dixie, her beagle just doesn't shut up. Now, Jesse's beagle, she, she got kind of a pitchy bark, but then she'll lay down and go to sleep. At that moment, it's a breath of fresh air. Hallelujah. All right. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the people as they give. We thank you that heaven's windows are open unto them, and you empty out blessings they don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' glorious, wonderful, and mighty name, amen. Go ahead, Brother Joe. Any in-house offerings, Joe's waiting. Uh, if not, then we're going to let you go here in just a second. Thank you all for joining us tonight. God bless you. Have a great week, Lord. Join us on Sunday. Be with us. We'd love to have you come in person again. And uh, until we meet again, Remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you. Good night. See you next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad.